Tonight, we take you deep into the heart of Florida, where an extraordinary battle between man, nature, and machine is unfolding. In the swamps of the Everglades, two ingenious solutions are redefining what it means to fight for balance in an ecosystem on the brink. What began as a crisis of invasive reptiles has evolved into a high-tech experiment unlike anything the world has seen before. Florida has done something no one thought possible. It released hundreds of robotic rabbits into the wild, designed not for play but for war. These artificial creatures have one mission, to hunt the Burmese python. Behind their soft, furry appearance lies the cutting edge of conservation technology. Each robotic rabbit radiates heat, releases scent, and moves like a real animal, luring one of the world's most destructive predators out of hiding. It sounds like science fiction, but this is a very real campaign backed by millions of dollars, dozens of organizations, and decades of desperate struggle. The story begins in the 1980s, when Burmese pythons first appeared in Florida through the exotic pet trade. At first they were considered gentle and fascinating pets, easy to keep harmless to humans, but that illusion shattered as the snakes grew, reaching up to 6 meters in length and weighing more than 50 kilograms. Many owners could no longer care for them and simply released them into the wild. Then came 1992. Hurricane Andrew tore through South Florida, destroying homes, power lines, and a reptile breeding facility near Miami, releasing hundreds of snakes into the surrounding wetlands. From that moment, the Everglades, a vast, fragile ecosystem spanning over a million acres, became their new home. What happened next was an ecological disaster. The Burmese python found paradise in the Everglades, warm, wet, full of prey, and almost completely free of predators. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, by the early 2000s, the species had established stable breeding populations. They were no longer exotic intruders, they were now dominant predators. Over the next two decades, their numbers exploded beyond comprehension. By 2025, estimates placed their population somewhere between 30,000 and 300,000. The range itself tells the story, no one can count them all. In some regions like Big Cyprus, the pythons became so abundant that native wildlife nearly vanished. Surveys revealed that raccoons, marsh rabbits, opossums, and even small deer had declined by over 90%. The Everglades, once alive with nocturnal sounds, grew eerily silent. The ecological collapse rippled outward. With small mammals gone, birds of prey lost their food source. Carcasses decomposed slowly, soil systems weakened, and water quality began to shift. Scientists realized that humans were not just losing to numbers, they were losing to evolution. The Burmese python is built for survival. It can go months without food, move with ease both underwater and on land, and hunt using heat sensors along its jaws. It kills by constriction, then swallows its prey whole. There are verified reports of pythons devouring full-grown deer and even young alligators. Worse still, the snakes brought with them an Asian lungworm parasite that began infecting native reptiles, spreading disease and weakening already stressed populations. The Everglades had become a living organism under attack from within. As temperatures rise across the southern United States, the python's potential habitat could expand even farther north, threatening new ecosystems. Biologist Frank Mazzotti warned, if the climate keeps warming, Burmese pythons could spread across several states, triggering an ecological apocalypse. Hunters like Donna Kill described the situation bluntly, they've wiped out nearly everything small that used to live here. The Everglades, once a sanctuary of biodiversity, had quietly transformed into the kingdom of the python. For years, the response was simple but brutal, hunt them. Florida turned fear into competition, launching the Python Challenge in 2013. It was part public awareness campaign, part wildlife control program. Participants from across the country signed up, underwent training, and entered the swamps armed with little more than flashlights and courage. In the first year, only 68 pythons were captured, proof of just how hard the task was. But the contest grew, attracting thousands of people. By 2025, nearly a thousand hunters joined the event, removing almost 300 pythons, the highest count on record. Winners earned thousands in prize money but what they really won was respect. The challenge became a spectacle of endurance. Hunters waded chest-deep in muddy water, camped in mosquito-filled marshes, and returned with snakes longer than themselves. The event turned into a media sensation, a blend of survival show and environmental crusade. News outlets called it a war between humans and nature. Yet scientists quietly admitted the truth, the hunts were symbolic, in a wilderness spanning millions of acres catching a few hundred snakes a year made little difference. Researcher Ian Bartasek said it best, each python caught is replaced by dozens of hatching eggs, still the challenge had value. It connected ordinary people to the crisis, turned conservation into a story people could feel, and inspired future scientists and volunteers. But Florida needed more than courage, it needed intelligence. In 2022, a research team led by Robert McClary at the University of Florida tried something different. They placed nine cages containing live rabbits in the swamp for 90 days, equipped with cameras and heat sensors. The goal was to understand what truly attracted pythons. 
The results were stunning. 22 pythons were drawn in, lingering for hours around the cages, waiting for prey they could never reach. McClary made it clear that no animals were harmed but the backlash came swiftly. Animal rights groups accused the project of cruelty, calling it psychological torture. McClary defended the research as essential for understanding predator behavior ethically. Despite controversy, the experiment revealed a crucial fact. Pythons are irresistibly drawn to heat and scent. Unfortunately, the project was too expensive to continue. The swamp's harsh environment damaged equipment faster than researchers could replace it. The experiment was halted, but its data sparked a new idea. If real rabbits worked, why not create artificial ones? What if humans could replicate heat, scent, and movement without using live animals? Out of failure and controversy, innovation was born. By 2024, Florida scientists unveiled the Robo Rabbit Project. Developed by the University of Florida and the South Florida Water Management District, the robotic rabbits were marvels of engineering. Each cost around $4,000 with a waterproof polymer shell, synthetic fur, and an internal heat system that maintained a steady body temperature of 39 degrees C. They emitted synthetic pheromones to mimic rabbit scent and were powered by solar batteries that allowed them to operate for weeks without human assistance. Equipped with infrared sensors and AI cameras, the robots transmitted live footage back to control centers, where analysts monitored Python activity in real time. The first deployment targeted Python hotspots in the Everglades and Big Cypress. The results were immediate. The robots attracted pythons from over 50 meters away, providing researchers with unprecedented behavioral data. Some snakes even coiled around the machines before slithering off, fooled by the heat and scent. Although 10-15% of the robots malfunctioned, often due to animal attacks or power failures, the success rate exceeded 80%. For the first time, scientists could observe python behavior without disturbing the ecosystem. National Geographic praised the project as a humane and innovative breakthrough, while Scientific American cautioned that humans must remember nature cannot be programmed. McClary himself summed it up. We're not trying to control nature, we're learning to listen to it through data. By mid-2025, the project had entered full operation. 120 robotic rabbits were active across the Everglades, achieving an 85% success rate. For the first time in decades, the state saw a measurable 15% drop in python density in certain regions. The $480,000 initiative was considered a small price for the knowledge it brought. Plans for Phase 2, scheduled for 2026 to 2028, would double the number of robots and expand coverage into neighboring habitats. Beyond numbers, the Robo-Rabbit project changed how people thought about conservation. It wasn't about domination anymore, it was about partnership. The data collected is now training AI systems capable of recognizing Python movement, predicting breeding zones, and even distinguishing male from female through thermal imagery. If successful, these systems could be deployed across other states threatened by invasive species. While some ecologists worry about technology altering natural behavior, so far no harmful effects have been recorded. What began as a desperate fight for survival has evolved into a new philosophy. Humans once fought nature with traps and guns, now they use data, empathy, and creativity. As researcher Chris Dutton said, humans and nature are not enemies, they're partners through science. From the failures of the past, Florida has found a smarter way forward. The Everglades, once a symbol of helplessness, now stands as a living laboratory of hope. The battle against the Burmese python is far from over, but Florida is no longer fighting blind. It has found a way to turn knowledge into its greatest weapon. If you believe technology can both save nature and challenge human limits, share this video so more people can witness the battle unfolding in the Everglades. Don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on notifications, because this story is just beginning. The war between nature and artificial intelligence has entered a new chapter, and the outcome could redefine the future of conservation itself.